Welcome to the latest edition of Marshallpreneur TV. My name's Scott Patterson and uh, this week's interview I want to bring to your attention the amazing Tuhon Felix Cortez of Filipino Combatives Global. Now, um, Tuhon Felix has been in the game for many years. He's uh, got over 30 years experience in uh, FMA and Taekwondo and uh, he really is, he's been there, seen it, done it, got the t-shirt. So, uh, you know, what he doesn't know about teaching and training, you could probably write it on a postage stamp. Um, this interview that we did, it was taken a few weeks back when uh, Felix was over training with uh, myself and Luke Holloway and Nico uh, for Keep It Raw. And uh, we were doing a special there. So uh, he was kind enough to take some time out uh, to uh, have a chat with us and uh, give us a little insight into um, how we run a very successful Taekwondo school. And... Uh, how uh, he's had some opportunities to do TV work and film work and um, also sharing with us uh, the future and how he sees uh, Filipino combatives global and where he's uh, going with that. So if you are uh, looking to be a serious martial arts instructor, then uh, you can glean a lot of great information from this interview. It really is very valuable and uh, I'd just uh, like to thank Tuhon Felix Cortez for, uh, for doing this for us. So without further ado... Go check it out. Welcome to Marshallpreneur TV. We've got here to be with us today, Tuhon Felix Cortez yeah, from Aussie nice. Global. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's coming to train with us uh, with uh, a couple of projects on Keep It Raw. And uh, hopefully uh, we can do some projects in the future as well, which would be good. Fantastic. And we've had a good time. We had a blast. Oh, wow. Great time. Great time. <laughs> really good. Um, I've been training up. I've not, not uh, done Filipino combatives before and Tuhon's had the pleasure of Trying to get me over the hill. Yeah, you're doing, you're doing <laughs> it's just a, fine. Doing just fine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been great. It's a great system. But um, I just wanted to just have a quick interview with you. Sure, absolutely. Um, and just sort of um, let the guys know a bit about yourself. Maybe um, just a bit of background about what it is you teach and uh, what what your, what your system's about. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I started training at the uh, age of 13 mm -hmm. years old. Um, I was inspired by the whole. Bruce Lee thing. Yeah. Uh, my first movie that I saw was um, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, uh, I believe is the, the Way of the Dragon with uh, uh, Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah. In the Coliseum, big yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, you know, uh, epic in my life then. Yeah. I'm, oh man, I go home and I'm kicking and everything. And so my mother got a little tired of me jumping around the house <laughs> and then over the furniture and stuff. And uh, yeah. so I, uh, she signed me up at a school that I thought it was a, like a, karate or just general martial arts school, you yeah. know, kicking and punching. And uh, it turned out to be a, an FMA school, a Filipino Martial Arts Academy. Okay. Uh, it was called um, uh, uh, Sayok, a uh, 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 fighting uh, system. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a martial arts school. They had a side where they did uh, um, uh, Taekwondo and then they had their, you know, their side where, you know, they did the, uh, the, the family art. Mm. And uh, so, you know, I got lucky, I guess, yeah. and I've been doing uh, Filipino martial arts uh, ever since. Okay, fantastic. So how many years, roughly, is that? Uh, let's just say uh, over 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yes, yes, over 30 years I've been in the Filipino martial arts. Oh, great. So, I mean, a bit about what we do at Martialpreneur is, is sort of uh, just try and put out a bit of help and advice for, for uh, people who are looking to maybe take their, their um, passion or their hobby further mm -hmm. and uh, actually do... For full time, maybe, or, or even just part time. Um, what what sort of uh, led you into the teaching side of it? Just well, I got promoted to uh, Tuhon, which mm -hmm. is a master instructor in the uh, in the side fighting system. Mm -hmm. I was the uh, first uh, person to uh, receive that honor, um, and the first non-Filipino, you know, at, uh, in the side fighting system. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> and I so I I didn't really set out. Uh, you know, to have school or, or be an instructor. Right. Okay. You know, it was an honor for me to reach that level, but yep. um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a goal that I had set. It just kind of kind of fell into place. Okay. You know? did, did you have a, a normal day job? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, I had a no, normal day job, and um, um, you know, I just used to you know train mm -hmm. uh, and for fun because I enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, but I also have friends who wanted to open up a school with me um, that offered a, you know, a partnership or something and mm -hmm. I, uh, I didn't want the responsibility right, and yeah. so on um, and it just wasn't something that I thought about it. <clears throat> oh, okay. um, 
But in 1991, uh, that's the year that I got uh, promoted to Tujon. Right. Um, I the uh, the promotion was set in, uh, in in Maryland, in Baltimore, Maryland, and the uh, instructors there, son, uh, he was working at the time for a um, uh, a taekwondo uh, a company who had many many chains of uh, oh, taekwondo okay. schools, and since I also did taekwondo as well, they offered me a job. Right. And I thought, well, you know, it's not like owning a school or running your own school. You right. just, you know, kind of, so you, you know, go in and, and do your job you. and teach and stuff, and yeah. you don't have to deal with, you know, all the other headaches behind behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was great. I enjoyed it. You know, went there, taught the classes, and I ran one of the top successful schools um, uh, for um, uh, Master J Kim in in, uh, in Baltimore. Okay. And so it was great. Uh, one day I went uh, to my uh, manager, regional manager, and uh, I asked him, I said, hey, you know, I, I need a raise. It was about a year into working. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> and well, let's just say I didn't get the raise. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was a little, uh, uh, I didn't take it well because I was producing uh, in the school. You know, right. it was one of the top schools. Yep. My classes were filled. I was teaching like five classes a day with up to 30 people in the class wow. um, and uh, they even provide an assistant because I they saw that it was people Strange coming course. in and out and so on and uh, you know my my thing was yes I teach martial arts but I also am selling a program mm. so if uh, somebody is coming into uh, the school and they're watching a class and by the way that I teach uh, or the things that I say in the class you know it might spark an interest so you know, they decide, hey, you know, I'd like to do this. Mm. So it won't be like somebody's trying to, you know, force sell you, you know, a program. So sure. I, I knew that I was doing well in that. Yeah. And um, anyway, when I didn't get the raise, I called my friend and I said, uh, hey, uh, is that offer still available? Yeah. And he said yes. And we started looking for a location. And uh, this was a year later. So in, in uh, July of 1992 right. is when we, I opened the... Um, Arnest uh, Taekwondo Academy, okay. which was a uh, uh, an academy dedicated to uh, Filipino and uh, and Korean uh, uh, martial arts. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Okay, that's great. So, <clears throat> what led then from you to open that academy, and then so now you're you're uh, teaching in <clears throat> right. Well, system. well, what happened was that uh, because the Taekwondo started doing so well, um, Filipino martial arts uh, was not. Uh, I guess as known or as popular in the area. There's a lot of karate schools, a lot yeah. of taekwondo schools. So the taekwondo part of it just took off. Yeah. And now I have a business, a family, you know, home, bills, and so on. Yeah. That you know, you just, you, I just went with the flow sort of thing. And I enjoy taekwondo. Sure. I had a lot of kids. I catered to children. One of our slogans was children. You know, they're a specialty. Yeah. And uh, we work with the children. We work with the school system. Um, um, when the children were not doing well in school, uh, parents would say, if you don't do well, I'm going to tell Mr. Felix and, yeah. you know, and then if they tell me, I would like, you know, take their belt or, yeah. you know, or f figure out some way to motivate them to, sure. hey, this is the consequences in karate class that yeah. you'll have if you don't do good in school. Sure. So now teachers get a hold of, the, you know, hear the news and, oh, wow, yeah. you know, Johnny's doing so much better now, yeah. you know, what's going on? And the parents say, well, you know, he's going to this martial arts school okay. so when the teachers have a little problem with a student in the class yeah. they will write a note to the parents and say you should take him to <laughs> this karate school <laughs> that's great so it's great promotion yeah, yeah, yeah great yeah. promotion so you yeah. know so it worked out because that's the thing i mean um i know a lot of guys sort of maybe uh, um, some guys and, and female instructors as well want, want to get involved in teaching children mm -hmm. and sometimes they find it quite hard i know people i've spoke to find it quite hard how to approach a school or um, a community about teaching uh, kids or doing a kids program. Um, what sort of tips would you give? One, one of the things is uh, getting involved with the Parents Teachers uh, Association, yeah, sure. um, maybe doing a, a, a fundraisers like a mm -hmm. karate demonstrations. Um, one thing they do in the U.S. is the so like so sort of car wash or mm -hmm. things, you know, where they help. Um, they have maybe a, like a, a little event at the school. Sure. Um, uh, to promote uh, maybe money for for the school, like I would go to a school and uh, when they're having a, some kind of uh, assembly, yeah. then we would do like a demonstration and yeah. people any donations that came would give to the school. It's like a fundraiser. Like fundraisers help yeah. the school out, yeah. um, and also when the kids uh, are doing well in school, 
um, with you know better grades and better behaviors due to you know the discipline yeah. that they're learning and self control that they're learning in, uh, uh, from the class. Then it's we get a lot of um, word of mouth. Yep. You know the word gets around. People talk about it, and they say even parents will tell, "Hey, you know my kid did you know this in school," and they say, "Wow, you know my kid, you know uh, used to be like that. Now he trains here. Maybe you should send your send kid." Your so you know we get a, a lot of uh, word of mouth. Yep. Another thing is that we just put out a a, a kid friendly ad because I I really enjoy kids. Sure. Um, you know I have s some adults, but. Uh, as time went on, we just focused and specialized on kids. We had a, a kids martial arts team, mm -hmm. and uh, so we would maybe place an ad in one of the um, local shopping magazines. Yeah, or, sure. Or um, there uh, in the U.S., we have something. It's called the uh, uh, money mailer, and it's coupons that you get okay. in the mail. Okay. And then we would put a little ad with our students. You know, yeah. like. Uh, you know, get an A in karate and, you know, achieve high goals and we have somebody, a kid doing high kicks, oh, you know, so. things like this. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, so we would get uh, people, That's great. You know, students that way. I, was, I interviewed uh, uh, one of our Royal Combat instructors, yes. uh, Ken, Ken Byrne in um, Ireland, and he was saying a very similar thing. He's got a, a great school going, he's got mm -hmm. over, a, a, I think the mate's growing, but he's... He's got about 150 kids training. Wow, that's great. Um, and he's he said exactly the same thing. So he was saying, you know, he's really he's really focused on the community. Yes. And um, you know, working with the schools and, and things like that. So it sounds like that's a great way to. I think if anyone was looking to, to get more sure, uh, sure. more kids involved or more involved in the community, that sounds. Like a great and it depends. Way. Some people, some instructors, you know, prefer to um, uh, cater to a. a older yep. you know adults and so on yep. and you know that that's that's good too um, you just have to have a curriculum that it's uh, you know like if you're teaching children you know it's, yeah. it's kid friendly you know yeah. so uh, at the same time that they're learning that they're developing confidence self-control mm -hmm. you know and discipline you know they're also having a, a little fun in yeah. class not goofing around you know playing yeah, like, yeah. you know but you know there's a discipline but yeah. you know within the drills that we do or so on yeah. then we'll say okay we're gonna have a little contest uh, like highest kicker or a splits club or yeah, yeah. you know or something so uh, little, something inside that sure, as well something to within motivate. so they have little motivation and challenges and, and technique of the week yeah. or you know like um, when we have a testing yeah. we would do like uh, demonstrations and board breaking and have some of the kids come out that weren't testing maybe that were a little younger yeah. uh, group and have them come out and do uh, uh, techniques board breaking and stuff yeah. uh, the spectators or parents and friends that would come and watch it's like oh my god you yeah. know I want my child to do that just makes a big event of it <laughs> make a big training. event of it yeah. you know you have a, an awards and yeah. um, you know and you applaud their their efforts yeah. and you know and their achievements and that's great and then they have fun and tell and their they friends have fun and, and tell their friends and, and sure that's cool so um I'm from the, the uh, Taekwondo school, um, and now you're teaching um, Filipino martial arts. Um, <laughs> well, um, uh, I my true love is Filipino martial arts. Is what I started in. Yeah. Although I have, you know, I trained in Taekwondo as well, um, and you know, I'm getting a little older and stuff. Mm -hmm. And although I love teaching children, I also love teaching Filipino martial arts. And I have a friend, um, you know, that told me, "Wow, you're, you know, you're." Uh, really good at Filipino martial arts. You know, you're known for your Filipino martial arts. You're yeah. one of the top guys in Filipino martial arts. Why are you teaching Taekwondo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, maybe that's going to, you know, change. And I thought about it. Uh, and I decided in 2009, uh, you know, to start promoting Filipino martial arts. Right. You know, so while exactly. teaching it. I mean, I came from the uh, Sayoka uh, fighting systems. Yeah. Um, and uh, my instructor, Pamana Tohon Chris Sayok. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked me uh, to um, uh, kind of uh, uh, start doing the, the side fighting systems again. And uh, so I started working on a, a, a curriculum based on, you know, what we originally did, but, you know, a little more uh, modern. Yep. Um, and based off of the original formulas and ideas, then I created the, uh, uh, a group of Filipino combatives. Yep. Which is the it's a FC or now a, uh, Filipino Combatants Global, okay. um, and I picked FC because it's my initials for you know my name is uh, Felix yeah. Cortez. I mean it's fantastic. I mean <laughs> the logos here, so, so. it's fantastic. It's very great. You obviously got the FC, <laughs> and then if you look around, this all this cool looking artwork is actually if you read it, it's Cortez, which is right. My logo, brilliant. 
is my last name, is my, my family name, which is the, it's written uh, sideways and then flipped over. So you have the C-O-R, and then the T, then E, and the S, and then, you know, so it's, it's Fidesz Cortez, man. which is Filipino combatives. And then now that I'm teaching, you know, all over the world, you know, Filipino combatives, uh, global. And the, um, the, the person who designed this yeah. is, um, uh, Tuhon Rafael Kayanan, okay. uh, who is also he's a, a, a famous artist. He does uh, graphic novels. He does right. uh, uh, s uh, storyboards. Um, you know, he's uh, he's worked for uh, done things for Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, really? um, uh, Conan uh, the Barbarian, wow, uh, books and stuff. So I was lucky, yeah. you know, to have uh, uh, somebody of his character. Exactly. I mean, that's gonna be a great person to design to know. my logo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, you just want to do that for me? Yeah. Yeah, so you know, it was that's great. great. That's cool. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned a little bit about the movies there. We, we've talked a little bit about choreography, and I know with some of the things we're doing uh, with uh, fight choreography with the, the show, and. Um, uh, two on Felix has got tons of knowledge. <laughs> he, he says to him, let's do a scene. He's like, right, ah, here's the ideas. And they come, ah, ah, ah. And then, then he's off with the sticks and the knives and fire. He's like, well, you go here, you go here. Um, but yet we were talking, you'd done that, you'd been in some, some films before, hadn't you? Um, well, yeah, some, um, I've worked on, uh, uh, had the opportunity to work on uh, some live shows. Mm -hmm. I worked for a, uh, a, a team out of uh, New York City that put on a show that was called um, Art of War. Okay. And we would travel nationally in the U.S. and and uh, they did also some shows abroad uh, for uh, television uh, industrial shows, and we put on like uh, different skits like a ma um, macho Matrix you know yeah, type yeah. of thing, a Matrix type of thing, um, or uh, you know Samurai Ninja type of stuff, um, yeah. you know uh, Secret Agents different shows with yeah. propelling and, and stuff like that. So you get some uh, stage experience there. Yeah. Um, I was also, I did a, a television pilot mm -hmm. um, that it was called uh, Quest where I worked uh, with, uh, uh, to help to train the little, uh, not so little, but it was a young man right. <laughs> and uh, you know, some fight uh, scenes and uh, yeah. uh, they hired me uh, because I did, a, uh, I guess, a pretty good job uh, training him for this um, um, scene that they were going to shoot that they hired me to, to choreograph the, right. the, the whole show. And uh, and I I worked on uh, trauma trauma you heard of trauma, oh, so trauma, trauma films, films. Yeah, uh, yeah. I did a toxic avenger yeah. you know I played the cab driver in that no martial arts <laughs> but, scenes but, uh, but that's still cool. you know but it still <laughs> still was pretty cool and being on set you know you learn yeah. a lot about you know the camera and I speak to the cameraman and I speak to different so, people yeah. and try to you know uh, learn stuff but by no means I'm you know I'm not a, a big you know movie <laughs> guy professional or anything no, 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 but every so, little bit yeah. you know helps so. I was going to ask, how, how did you like sort of get get those opportunities? How did they arise? I know like um, a lot of people you know, sort of say, oh, I, I did this, did that, <clears> but I know myself, I'm always thinking, how did, how did you get that? How well, did you get I, those breaks? You know? the, the way I got the breaks is um, I used to I used to break dance. Okay. And then uh, one day, uh, uh, my friends, they were, uh, they were really professional break dancers, and they've done uh, U.S. tours mm -hmm. um, with uh, various uh, uh, rap groups. Mm. Um, from the states, and uh, one year they had uh, they needed like an opening act for a show, yeah. and uh, because I know the talent and the, the these break dancers are really good, I had to come up with something special. So what I did is I break dance with a machete. I get a live machete. Right. I'd go on stage. I'd break a, a board in half with the machete, and then I would do a <laughs> Filipino martial arts form, and then start you know, awesome. doing the break dancing yeah. and things like that. And when their manager saw it. She fell in love with it, and yeah. you know they hired me. And the next thing you know, I was uh, doing a 52 city tour. It was called the New York City Fresh Fest tour, right? Uh, with Run DMC, uh, Houdini, awesome. Fat Boys, Grandmaster yeah. Flash, Furious Five, all all rap stars from the <laughs> I guess late 80s, yeah, you know. I just, <laughs> I just bought the Run DMC uh, greatest hits <laughs> album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, so I toured with them, yeah. and then after that tour. Our manager got us uh, an audition for that uh, Quest uh, TV pilot thing. Right, so that's how you Yeah, so that, that was point. one thing. And then the director from uh, that show um, had a friend that was doing a movie mm -hmm. that was called The um, uh, Escape from Safe Haven. Okay. And it was, uh, uh, the story was about uh, a, um, 
like after the the bomb was dropped and you know now this all the city is ruined right. and people are living in on the ground and post and, and apocalypse that thing, kind of thing, thing. Yeah, yeah. and he said hey you would be great for it he recommended me i yeah. went and i kind of read for it did an audition yeah. and there i was now i'm choreographing fights for that awesome. and also have a principal role in that and you know and then uh i also helped to train a, the stunt double for um um benicio del toro which uh -huh. is uh, Omar Sadat, uh, and uh, for the movie The The Hunted. Okay. So you know, I mean, it's it's a, it's a hard industry. You know, yeah. auditions and stuff, but it doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah. You know, to get a little break or or know yeah. somebody that'll recommend you for for a show. It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> it's like being here. I'm yeah. here. You know, I met Luke. Uh, Luke came yeah. to my house uh, to right. train with me, and um, he's getting certified uh, as an instructor in uh, Filipino combatives. And you know, next thing you know. I'm in England it shooting a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, no worries. <laughs> so, you know. I mean, it was when uh, and Luke was uh, said said to me, he's like, "Oh, guys, you got to train. You got to train with two old Felix. You know, he's like fucking awesome with a, a stick and the knives and everything." I was, like, I was like, "Yeah, that's great." And then, um, so like I say, then it's word of mouth. Then again, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. like, come, yeah. it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get him down to, over here to train and. And um, yeah, and then we were like, got to do a special. We've got to do a special. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you decided that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> what, so. What's cool about Filipino combatives is that, yeah. is even though we do like the choreography for you know for for the, like the shows or the fight scenes and stuff like that, yeah. um, it's based on reality moves. So it's We've not got just the real a, it's there, not yeah. just a choreograph. Like these moves can really you know yeah. yes we're selling them for the camera, but. The only difference is if I wasn't selling it for the camera, mm -hmm. I just tighten, you know, the move, tighten the shot, it and and it would be, you know, it's an actual move that I would, you know, use an application for us. minus the backflip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, hanging besides, off the ceiling. Besides yeah. that, besides that, you know, the mindset is still combative mindset. Yeah, uh, I don't like to train something, yeah. then I'd have to totally change to do something yeah. like this because. Yep. You know, it, we're, the focus is on effectiveness. Exactly. And it sells on the camera, I think. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think, uh, to look at the choreography side of things, I think people have seen enough of the cheesy kind of, you know, um, out there moves, you know, whereas, they, like you see, like with the Bourne films, you know, those kinds of, they're looking for like that fast, close quarter kind of, you know, action. And I think I think um, what you're doing is, is awesome for that kind of thing too, you know, because it's, it's uh, like you say, it's reality. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but it just so happens you're pretty handy with uh, the choreography side of it as well. Oh, well I, I put, I'm a little bit of a ham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like the camera. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, what, what's um, what's like the future holds for Filipino combatives global? What do you, do you plan to to do? More of what you're doing? Where can people find out more about you? Yeah, where, where, um, what are you up to? Yeah, I stopped teaching Taekwondo to focus on uh, promoting Filipino combatives worldwide. Mm -hmm. I do seminars. Uh, you know, all over the world now. Um, but I'm focusing on setting up uh, groups, certifying mm -hmm. instructors, and having uh, people represent, uh, you know, Filipino combatives uh, uh, global. Right. Um, so that's the that's, uh, direction that, that, that I'm heading on. I really enjoy it. Uh, I've met a lot of uh, uh, good people, talented martial artists, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so far, you know, we're, we're doing pretty good, you know. Okay. Look, okay. Moving a little slow, but it's better to be you know, slow and have quality, then to move too fast and lose, sure. you know, lose sure. snowballing and lose track of it. Do it right, yeah, spend yeah, some yeah. time on it. That's right. It? Yeah. I mean, um, where can people go to uh, on the on the web? You got a website? Um, people yes, I have a you? website. It's um, um, FilipinoCombatives.com. Uh, I have an online training program. Awesome. So if people want to train with me, they can, you know, log on and I have, a, you know, step-by-step uh, uh, instructional uh, videos. Right. Right. I also have online. Uh, if you as a can sign up as a free subscriber, and I have um, uh, f uh, free seminar videos and some uh, uh, trainings for it, right. introductions to to the uh, the, the program. Okay, I'll, th <coughs> I'll throw up a link for everyone to go to if they <coughs> want to check that out. Um, you should see it somewhere on here. I'll throw that up. <laughs> right, right, right. And then, uh, and also, then there you can go find that. We yeah. also have a, you know, they can like us on uh, Facebook, yeah. Filipino Combatives, uh, you know, uh, Global Facebook, we'll Filipino Combatives, you. Global Greece, Venezuela, Russia. <laughs> Worldwide. <laughs> and take it over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so that's I mean, great. Okay, well that's cool. Well thank you very much too. Oh, it's a pleasure, man. Thank, thank you, you for and, having me. Oh, thank you for, for coming on board and uh, coming and, and training us, you know, it's been great. And, 
and speaking to the Marshall Print oh, guys. Hey, you guys keep it raw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so check it out and um, I'll catch you on the next episode.